Welcome everyone to our talk on uh, a deep learning approach to recover conditional independence graph. This is joint work with Ursula Hayuska, Robin Abraham from uh, Microsoft Research, and our colleague Sin Shi Chen from Georgia Tech. So what are conditional independence graphs? So our task here is like given uh, samples, which have uh, like given a data which has M samples and uh, D features, we want to be recover uh, adjacency matrix which, uh, among, uh, which shows the connection between the D features in form of a graph. These gra this, this is a special graph because it has like two types of uh, edges, so, so it can have like a positive correlation or negative correlation. So basically uh, what conditional independence tells you is that if uh, given all the other conditioned on all the other features, whether uh, those two features are dependent on each other or not. So uh, it's basically, um, so our contribution here is to develop this algorithm which maps from input samples uh, to the output graph. Uh, as, and uh, we, we devised like an unsupervised deep unfolding based neural network model to do the same. So this input sample can be like gene regulatory networks where you have different uh, gene expression values and, like, and the columns will be different genes. And we will recover uh, this graph output will be a gene, uh, a connection between different genes uh, recovering a gene regulatory network. So how do we formulate this problem? So we are given M samples with D features each. And uh, we formulate it as a sparse graph recovery problem, where we assume that the uh, underlying distribution is a multivariate Gaussian distribution. And our task is to estimate the precision matrix theta. So if, if there's a zero in the precision matrix, that means that those two variables are conditionally independent of each other. So basically, if you recover the precision matrix, you recover the underlying graph connection between features, the sparse connection between features. And uh, we introduce like an L1 norm to get like sparse uh, output graph. This is a, pr a very popular uh, formulation called graphical lasso formulation, uh, which fits, th this fits the covariance term. Sorry, this fits the uh, Gaussian distribution and this is the L1 sparsity term. Now, uh, there are many existing optimization algorithms to obtain this underlying precision matrix of the multivariate Gaussian distribution. So for instance, there's like a range of proximal gradient descent algorithms. Uh, then there is like block coordinate descent based methods. And there are like alternating direction method of multipliers. Um, and, and so there are many drawbacks of these algorithms. The key drawback is like these algorithms have these um, uh, sparsity related hyperparameters and they are very uh, they are very sensitive uh, to the to the optimization essentially what we are showing here is like the recovered graph recovered precision matrix and true precision matrix and its distance uh, like square norm um, and we can see like if you move the sparsity based hyperparameters so for the same beta if you move rho if you choose rho to be 0 0.01 or 0 0.03, you can see a vast difference in the uh, recovered, uh, recovered uh, error, right? So it's very, um, so existing alg algorithms, the, it's very difficult to hyper-tune, like tune these hyperparameters. And, and there are also uh, limitations of these existing algorithms in terms of the convex formulation and the consistency of the estimator. So there's obviously a lot of room of improvement here. So what is our approach? Uh, we say, OK, so we want to directly learn the mapping of, uh, from the input data to the precision matrix, as, which is the output graph. So we take the function f, and we apply it on the input data to get like a precision matrix theta. We define the log likelihood as a loss function. And here comes our, uh, like the novelty of this work. We choose f, uh, this function f as like a GLAD model. So uh, I'll describe this model uh, briefly. So in general, if, if you want to design this function f, uh, which acts uh, on that input and it outputs a graph directly, what are the major challenges that, uh, that can happen if, say, you choose like, a deep learning model? So first of all, like, you know, uh, we, we want the model to, so to not scale with, with the dimension. So current approaches, if you apply like traditional DNNs or convolutional neural networks or autoencoder-based approaches, the parameters will scale as dimension square. 
And there's also, uh, since we are recovering uh, adjacency matrix, like a precision matrix, we want to make sure that it's permutation invariant. So that's also one more condition which is tricky to handle with uh, deep learning models. Also, we want to maintain the positive definite constraint of the precision matrix, which is still a very difficult task. And also, it, it's a, like cherry on the cake if it's an interpretable model. So existing traditional approaches will not work well in this case. Um, so what, uh, what do we do? So we try to take, uh, model this problem as like we apply like an alternating minimization algorithm here. So we have, um, so basically we add the Lagrangian term. So we add another uh, variable Z and we add like that Lagrangian term. And now what we can do is we can separate out the terms in theta and Z. So you have like, you know, you can start with theta 0, z 0, theta 1, z 1, theta 2, z 2, and so on. And for each of these updates, we found like a nice closed form solutions. So once we have these closed form solutions, what we do is we unroll them to certain number of iterations, say k iterations. So you start with theta 0, z 0, theta 1, z 1, for like, and you unroll the alternating minimization algorithm to certain number of iterations and treat that whole thing as a deep model. And, and what we do is, like these sparsity related hyperparameters, which are difficult to learn, we model them as neural networks. So what we essentially have is the alternating, uh, the optimization algorithm as a template. And instead of optimizing over the entire space, we optimize over the neural network space, which we have parameterized it, it like very uh, using very minimalist design of neural networks, which output the hyperparameters um, um, as their output essentially. So what what do we get here? Since we are we are taking an alternating minimization approach, so the positive definite constraint and permutation invariance is included in the is included in, in the architecture itself. So it's inherent to that and. This model has like very minimalist number of neural networks, like hyperparameters. So it's it's quite uh, like fast to train, as well as it's interpretable. Like at every stage of that unroll model, you can take out the graph and you can see the graph which you have recovered. So this was the model uh, GLAD uh, recovery. So it becomes like a very recurrent architecture, uh, but it has it has like a fixed number of unrolled iterations. So it takes in samples and it outputs your graph. So we did some theoretical analysis around it. I'll skip through that. The key gist of it was we were able to show that like an adaptive sequence of penalty parameters uh, should achieve like a better bound. Like every iteration should have different, um, like adapt to the problem, the penalty uh, parameter value. And as well as it's hard to choose these hyperparameters manually as we saw in those experiments and we show that it has linear convergence so that you, you can use very uh, few number of unrolled iterations uh, for convergence uh, to converge. Now this is our work here we present UGLAD algorithm so the previous GLAD work used supervision for training and now we, sw we made it unsupervised so the way we did it we took that algorithm GLAD and we applied it directly to the loss of the maximum likelihood. And we just uh, backprop through it to train, um, uh, to train it in an unsupervised way. So the, uh, our algorithm unsupervised GLAD so, uh, has this particular loss function of uh, uh, maximum, uh, maximum likelihood. The, so the first task, like why this is useful, is that we can do multitask learning. So basically a single model of UGLAD can estimate multiple graphs together. So this brings in, uh, like, you know, this objective will tip, uh, like, you don't need to assume anything about the different uh, inputs, uh, as opposed to other multitask learning approaches, which try to construct like a joint objective uh, in order to minimize the loss over the different tasks. So these tasks can be completely independent of each other, and we can jointly uh, estimate the graph using a single UGLAD model. And um, so, we, yeah, as I said, like we don't need to pre-assume the specific similarity among different tasks. And so there's one very interesting use case for this. We can use it to handle missing values in this data. 
So usually the data for sparse graph recovery, it has like higher dimensions uh, and low number of samples, as well as like there are often missing values in real world experiments. Like for example, uh, gene expression data uh, has like missing values. So we introduce a new consensus strategy to handle such uh, missing values in this data. So how, uh, the key idea behind it is you take the entire sample uh, of data and you split it into batches. And now each of these batches, they are coming from the same underlying distribution. So they belong to the same uh, graph, like the same underlying graph. So that's, that's the idea. So we, what we do is we do some statistical mean imputation and then we split into k batches. And since all of these, um, uh, all of these data, are, it's coming from the same underlying distribution, so we can apply like a single model of UGLAD and uh, like estimate uh, all the k different precision matrices. And once we do that, we came up with like a way of combining those k different precision matrix into a single output precision matrix, which will give you the final consensus graph. And this uh, consensus graph, uh, we take like the max count uh, of, uh, of the signs. So like basically, whether it's a positive or negative edge, so we do like a max count of that. And, and we take the, minimal, the minimal absolute value uh, to take a conservative estimate of uh, the precision matrix. So we did a lot of experiments here. Um, I would just go through, like, uh, like I'll just tell like briefly what we did, and the more details are in the paper. So we did like synthetic data experiments, like when we recovered the Gaussian distribution. Then we used um, uh, gene regulatory network simulators to get like non-Gaussian data, and we showed improvements. Uh, then we did like uh, experiments over multitask learning, and we also did experiments on missing data, missing data with Gaussian and missing data from non-Gaussian distributions, uh, which cap. So we we are able to show that you Glad is able to capture um, tail distributions here, which is which is really the like one of the key benefits of using a deep learning model based on the template of uh, alternating minimization algorithm uh, over a Gaussian distribution. So one interesting uh, study which we did was on anaerobic digestion. So anaerobic digestion is a process where you, you take in waste material and you put it into a digester, and the uh, the way it goes like the waste material goes through like four different stages. Uh, I guess like hydrolysis, acetogenesis, acidogenesis, and methanogenesis. So our ultimate goal is to increase the methane yield as natural because that's natural gas and it's, it has a lot of downstream uses, right? So we take in waste, you have this digester, and our output met metric is methane yield. And now I will explain like how we used uh, the UGLAD algorithm uh, in, in order to like, you know, help with this whole process and identify the key, uh, uh, key, uh, the, the key ideas, like the key underlying mechanisms which drive the digestion uh, process. So we ask questions like which organisms are likely to coexist, which trace elements help organisms to thrive, and which interventions result in growth of organisms. Um, so one of the key technical challenges here is, so our data is like we divide it into bacteria and archaea, and we have like lots of uh, digester conditions uh, as our uh, meta variables on, uh, of, of which we can, like we want to control them so that we can design a good system of the digester so that we can increase the methane yield. The main challenge is like the number of features, it's way higher than the number of samples and there's very few public data set available. So we reduced our problem to having 418 archaea and 592 bacteria. We want to study how they coexist together. This will help the designers come up with better interventions and catalysts to improve the digestion process. And we had like a total of thousands, uh, uh, approximately sludge samples. So uh, we we did uh, recover um, a graphs which shows like a different uh, uh, archaea species, and that's different archaea family. And we also show here that like the existing state of the art algorithms uh, were not able to detect uh, many edges, but we did detect like few very prominent edge which was missed by the previous algorithms because we are able to capture tail distribution better. And uh, yeah, we did similar studies for different temperature settings 
and like now you can use these graphs and you can change different temperatures and different settings in the digester so that and you can observe how these changes evolve and you can design a system around it so that's like one of the key uses we found uh, of using such conditional independence graphs so i would conclude uh, so the key insights which we got like our model uglad is uh, automatically learns uh, the sparsity related hyperparameters during optimization uh, the multitask learning uh, of the it enables multitask learning which we use to handle robustly handle uh, missing values and since uh, it's a deep learning implementation uh, we can leverage gpus or also scale it on uh, cpus for uh, handling larger number of features well thank you everyone for joining and thank you